The allegory of the eagle and the serpent chronicles mankind's deep unconscious hatred of himself. It's a hatred that's fueled by the deepest denial of what it means to be human. This archetypal theme is far older than Western civilization itself, and yet is part of our own modern day meta narrative. This widespread and unconscious meta narrative paradoxically accounts for both the rise and the ultimate demise of Western civilization as we know it. Ironically, it's a demise which has been widely interpreted as progress. The powerful messages that symbols convey are often taken for granted in today's world. However, to those who are paying close attention, even the most ordinary symbols can convey the tragic story of mankind's dark legacy. And make no mistake, we're talking about a legacy of chaos and unforeseen consequences. Unlike traditional vexillology, which describes rather clinically a historical and symbolic study of flags, which is entirely decoupled from human psychology, this series is going to confront some very uncomfortable truths about humanity, and we will do that through the symbols that we create. And we're going to look at where we are heading as a species and the hard choices that we will need to make if the human race is to survive. Now, flags are far less important than the significance of the symbols they carry, of course. Of course, this brings us back to the meta narrative. It is the emblems and symbols themselves which share an important and unspoken relationship with reality and how we use those symbols in order to navigate the world we live in. What makes symbols so powerful is that they operate more directly in accordance with nature and they're important to our relationship to the world around us, much more important than language could ever hope to achieve. Studying symbols brings us into much closer contact with raw reality as it is. Why? It's because our survival as a species has always depended far more on nature's visual and auditory cues, which are then translated and approximated into human language and subsequently culture and civilization. So in that way, the symbols or the, the, the cues of nature that they can represent are far more vital to our immediate survival than anything else. And unfortunately, too many of us are losing touch with this unconscious fact of existence. So we have to ask, why is this the case? Well, it's because we live in an information society and we are moving further and further away from nature. So much further, of course, that we're destroying it. <laughs> so we live in a world of words now, primarily. And so language, of course, is... Language and thought operate together in a linear fashion, okay? Words are formed one by one from left to right or right to left in a sequence from beginning to end, kind of like machine code. In fact, exactly like machine code. Thoughts occur one at a time in succession. It is impossible to dedicate one's focused thoughts on two things or more at the very same instant. It is for this reason that any form of qualitative multitasking, of course, is impossible and doesn't really exist in the first place. 
whereas nature operates rather differently. And remember, we are part of nature, so don't forget that you have nonlinear processes happening all the time, okay? Your blood circulates, your heart beats, your liver processes, your all of your organs are doing something. And there's so many things happening at once. This is a very non-linear process happening inside of you all the time. So nature operates in this way. It, it, it operates in a dynamic and non-linear way. And we, we're kind of getting removed from that, right? We're, we're, we're kind of forgetting that um, we're, we're being decoupled from that, okay? And so while we can think of some operations in nature as seemingly temporal, where there is sort of a linear thing happening, like, for example, a seed that grows and forms into a sprout and eventually a tree, okay? Our description of such an occurrence in language can only at best approximate. We can only kind of roughly approximate the, the nonlinear and dynamic processes. And our lifespans are so short comparatively that we cannot comprehend the endless cycle in which nature operates. Yes, it's true that a seed forms a sprout, forms into a tree, forms a sapling and a tree, et cetera, et cetera, and that forms more seeds. And that seems like a linear cycle, but in the but in the overall grand scheme of our understanding of the cycles of the earth and the cosmos at large, there is within that seemingly linear cycle, there is this incredible level of dynamic uh, operations happening and the universe is universing all at once at the same time. And so we can get a glimpse of our world and see something grow and that appears to be a linear process, but in all reality, that is the, the, the processes of nature, just like our body, are completely nonlinear. So we have this, this world of the linear, or we have this world of, of thought and language which can move in a certain direction, okay? We can't multitask, so we have, we have just, we can scan line by line like computer code or when you read a book, that kind of thing. This is a linear way that we parse information about our world, right? That's why it takes the science so long to catch up, to learn about anything. And then as soon as we think we know just about everything there is to know about something scientifically, of course, uh, we find something else. And that keeps going and going and going because science is learning things through a linear fashion, whereas reality is occurring in a nonlinear fashion. So good luck trying to document that and have a full body of scientific knowledge about something that's nonlinear when your scientific knowledge is in fact based in a linear line scanning code. So in other words, nature was not created in a linear way, okay? It wasn't created with language or thought forms. It wasn't even created, now maybe it was created with non-linear dynamic mathematics, but it certainly was not created in a linear process or in, in any way that we can understand with our uh, capabilities as they are. So we will forever uh, fail to completely describe nature in terms of language, in terms of culture, or even through science, or even math for that matter. And I know some math people might get upset, but that's just the reality. While we can appreciate that anything in nature has a beginning, a middle, and an end, say like the lifespan of a tree, just as we interpret our lives to be organized in a similar way, and the stories we tell ourselves and each other about the world, 
in nature, there is a dynamic, nonlinear, self-replicating cycle which operates on a scale which cannot be fully understood by mere products of that process. We ourselves are, of course, products of that process.